Having discussed the benefits of caffeine on endurance performance in our last video of this series, I did also mention a problem that some people suffer from when consuming caffeine. So while overall, most people benefit from caffeine consumption, some people not only don't benefit, but should actively avoid consuming it if they care about maximizing their endurance performance, be it running, biking, rowing, whatever. So why is that? How much does caffeine negatively affect these people? And are you among them? Let's find out right here, right now. How we'll get to the bottom of this mystery is by employing the services of yet another study. In the previous video in this caffeine series, we looked at three studies. In this one, we'll only need to focus our attention on one. The researchers of this study recruited 113 athletes that were instructed to cycle 10 kilometers at their fastest pace while having consumed either two or four milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight or having consumed a sugar pill with no caffeine, which is known as the placebo. From here, the researchers also took samples from each person to run a genetic screen for each individual. This genetic screen allowed the researchers to test for a particular gene. The gene is known as CYP1A2 and holds the information for the production of an enzyme found in the body that metabolizes caffeine, meaning it reacts with caffeine and breaks it down into other molecules. Now, our genes, while the overall template is the same, there are slight variations, differences, known as polymorphisms or mutations. Now, I get that people think of the Hulk. Or some other sci-fi stories when we hear the term mutation. But mutations aren't necessarily a bad thing. Some can be rather beneficial. So this enzyme can have mutations if the genetic sequence, the gene itself, is somehow altered in the nucleotides or genetic letters that make up the gene. To clarify, we have a base gene that most people have, and if certain genetic letters, called nucleotides, are changed, it changes the enzyme produced. So what are these changes? Well, one version of the enzyme will be much quicker at metabolizing caffeine. So people with an AA gene variation will metabolize caffeine more quickly than the polymorphism, the mutation, that leads to the slow metabolism of caffeine, known as AC or CC polymorphism of the CYP1A2 gene. So in recap, AA means fast caffeine metabolism, AC and especially CC means slower caffeine metabolism. This gene is highly expressed in the liver, so when you consume coffee and the caffeine enters your bloodstream, the caffeine will eventually find its way to the liver, where it is metabolized to begin removing it from your body. So at this point, the question is, how do these genetic variations affect endurance performance? Well, let's look at the data. Here we're looking at all the participants grouped together, only split by the amount of caffeine consumed, meaning we're not looking at the gene variations yet. The lower the bar, the less time it took to bike the 10 kilometers. Obviously, that means they experience an improved performance. So that in mind, we see an improved performance consuming four milligrams of caffeine per kilogram compared to not consuming any caffeine. Great, that's consistent with the other studies that we've looked into. However, if we then take a step further and split up the participants according to their genetic makeup, we see that the fast metabolizers, the AA group, experience serious benefits from caffeine consumption at two or four milligrams. So yet the AC gene showed no improvement, but also no worsening of performance with caffeine consumption. And then comes the CC gene group, which showed significant worsening of their performance with increasing caffeine intake. So all this tells us that slow metabolizers of caffeine experience detrimental effects on their endurance performance. And fast metabolizers can't get enough of it as it helps them through and through. All right, so how to know if you're a slow metabolizer or a fast metabolizer? There are a number of direct and indirect ways of finding out. 
One way, which is far more rigorous, is to run the test on yourself. It doesn't have to be 10 kilometers and it doesn't have to have cycling involved. It could be only one kilometer and it can be running. Although I wouldn't go shorter than one kilometer because it still needs to be an endurance event and that's scraping the minimum. You would test yourself without consuming caffeine and time yourself. And then on another day, you redo the exercise after having consumed caffeine 45 to 60 minutes prior to the exercise and time yourself again. For real scientific rigor, you do each condition, so no caffeine and caffeine, three times for a total of six runs, three with and three without. This would be a direct measure, and if you find the average time for both conditions, you'll be able to see for yourself where you fall. As for those of you that are less inclined towards spending a week or more figuring it all out, you can just tap into the force and feel the midichlorians. The force will guide us. Okay, that may not work, but there are clinical signs, normally extended high blood pressure, extreme agitation, and overall sensitivity to caffeine for hours and hours are both signs you might not be metabolizing caffeine quickly. This is far less numerical, and I wouldn't trust this as a great metric, but it'll get things started. At this point, we're two videos into our series on caffeine, and you might be wondering as to how caffeine actually works. How does it actually improve your performance? How much to take? When to take it? And for those of you that may be slow metabolizers, there may be an added danger to consuming caffeine that even if you don't care about your performance, may be something to consider. So I'll touch on all those questions in the next video. I'll speak to you then. Bye.